Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tech Team GB. Today we're going to check out this awesome XMG gaming laptop. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so to start off the review, we're just going to take a look around the device. On the left hand side, you can see there's dual mini display ports, a single USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port, and a small little vent for outputting some of that heat. On the back, you can see you have a USB and ESATA combo port, and there's also a power input. It's nice that they put a USB port on the back as it makes cable management on your desk a lot easier because you can have a mouse coming out of there, or even something like a USB hub where you connect all your other peripherals up to, so that's nice. And you can also see there's another heat vent. Looking along the right hand side you'll find the Kensington Lock Gigabit Ethernet, dual USB 3.0, a SIM card slot, an SD card slot and your 3.5mm headphone and microphone jacks. On the top of the lid you can see there's some nice XMG branding, nothing too in your face, just looks simple but smart at the same time. On the front of the device is a plethora of LEDs such as aeroplane mode, caps lock indicators, num lock indicators, indicators of whether or not your laptop's charging, if it's about to run out of battery, what performance mode it is in, there's just so many LEDs for pretty much every single scenario so that's cool so you can quickly sort of tell what's going on with your laptop just by having a look at the LEDs. Located at the top of the screen is a fairly standard HD webcam and dual mic which I didn't really get the chance to test in too much depth but it seemed to work just fine. Probably won't produce any amazing images but it's there if you want it. Now the screen on the laptop that we have is a 15.6 inch 1080p Mac IPS display which looks great in both games and general use. Being IPS it has great colour reproduction as well as great viewing angles. One thing to note is though if you want to configure this you can actually have a 4K display on this laptop which I can imagine will look incredible on such a small screen although you will obviously have to pay the extra money for that. The trackpad on the laptop seems to work just fine, it's nothing spectacular but it does get the job done. It supports multi-touch as well which seems to work just fine without any hiccups. It's great for using things like web browsing so you can just flick through web pages and zoom in and out of images, those sort of things. In between the left and right click there's also a fingerprint sensor which makes logging into Windows much much faster. Uh, you can also customise the, um, the software so you can open up applications and web pages and things like that just with the swipe of a finger. For example I had Tech Team GB open up when I swipe my left index finger. Now onto the keyboard, as Andrew would say it doesn't have any cardinal sins and what this means is all the keys are of the correct size and in the right place. The only thing I did notice was the right control key was slightly elongated which didn't really cause any problems whatsoever but I did notice it. There's also a full number pad which I didn't find myself using too much on a laptop but it's there if you want to use it. Now the keyboard is actually fully LED backlit but only allows for white backlighting which isn't quite as nice as the one Andrew checked out on the GS70 but it still makes typing in the dark much easier. Now the laptop does have built in Onkyo speakers which seem to sound pretty decent to me at least although I'm quite a novice when it comes to high end sound. One thing I did notice though is that they did lack some volume which was kind of surprising considering they are quite large. Now the feet on the bottom of the laptop do a very good job of keeping it in one place which is nice and very important considering you're probably going to be using this mostly on a desk because it does get quite toasty. The specifications for our specific laptop is a quad core Intel Core i7-4720HQ, an NVIDIA GT970M, a 256GB M.2 SSD, 8GB of RAM and a 1TB hard drive. An important part of a portable device is its weight and size. This laptop itself weighs 2612 grams or 5.76 pounds and the power brick weighs 556 grams. The dimensions of the laptop are 271mm deep, 255mm tall and 385mm wide. Now the power brick that comes with the laptop is pretty damn humongous and it does get quite hot when you're really pulling from it. Its maximum power output is 150 watts and it's quite annoying to have to carry around. Now this would be more of a problem but it's pretty much unanimous across all gaming laptops. They all pretty much have humongous power bricks. In the box you also get two discs, one containing the drivers and the other one being the manual, as well as a microfiber cloth to keep your laptop squeaky clean. Now onto some benchmarking. The games that we tested were Grid 2, Bioshock Infinite, Tomb Raider and Skyrim. Bootload times were very important to me at least anyway, and unsurprising, a laptop with an M.2 SSD and Windows 8.1 boots up very, very fast. In this test, it took around about 11 seconds to start up, which is pretty crazy. 
There are a number of pieces of software on the laptop itself. One of the most interesting is the Sound Blaster Control Center, which has a massive amount of customization and literally allows you to control so many different things about how your laptop will sound. It's just awesome. There's so many advanced settings, a lot of things that I don't really understand, but they're there for the you know audio files that want them. Now the final thing that I want to talk about is build quality, and this laptop is okay in this respect. The lid flexes quite a bit when you put pressure on it, and the hinge doesn't feel amazingly sturdy. One thing I also noticed was when you push down on the keyboard, it does sort of flex a little bit, not too bad, but it would kind of surprise me considering the laptop costs over a thousand pounds, and for something that premium, you would expect a slightly higher level of build quality. Overall, the laptop is a very impressive piece of kit for such a small form factor, and can handle pretty much anything you'll be able to throw at it. Now onto the Tech Team GB scores. For value for money, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 because I think it comes in fairly reasonably priced compared to its competition. For performance, it's going to give it a 5 out of 5 because it can pretty much handle, like I said, anything that you can throw at it. For functionality, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. It lost a point here just because of the slight lacking build quality. For style, it's going to also get a 4 out of 5 because I think it looks very good, although it isn't quite as good looking as the MSI GS70. And overall, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 for its Tech Team GB score. Alright guys, so thanks for watching this episode of Tech Team GB. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you dislike it, hit the dislike button. While you're down there, leave us a comment so you can tell us what to improve on next time. Or you can also tell us what you loved about the video so we can make sure we keep on doing it. Make sure you subscribe so you can get regular updates whenever we release a video. Also favourite the video so that you can come back to it later so it doesn't just get lost in the world of YouTube. Share it so your friends can also watch this amazing content and we'll see you all next time. Bye!